So corruption has uh, hampered government's efforts to disperse relief funds for companies hard hit by COVID-19 and the lockdown. And the Auditor General's report released yesterday was damning. It was also announced that the Labour Minister had placed the Commissioner of the Unemployment Insurance Fund, Teboho Maruping, on precautionary suspension. Now the UIF, remember, has been responsible for paying the Temporary Employer Employee Relief Scheme, or TERS, which paid out workers who had been put on unpaid leave or whose employment employers couldn't afford to pay their full salaries due to the lockdown. The Auditor General found that the UIF made overpayments and underpayments worth millions and it also paid minors, dead people and prisoners during the COVID-19 crisis. Now this uh, vindicates an organization that has been concerned about the TERS payments, that, that's what they're called, uh, in short uh, the National Employers Association of South Africa or NIASA. To discuss we're joined by the Chief Executive of NIASA, Gerard Papenfus. Uh, Mr. Papenfuss, thank you. Are you surprised at the suspension of the UIF Commissioner and, and the findings that millions were overpaid or, or underpaid? You know, one, one needs to have a bit of sympathy with the, uh, with the UIF uh, fund. Uh, this uh, thing was done to them when, it, when, when the lockdown was introduced. This thing was done to them and, and they had to get a system in place in a matter of days, not even weeks. You know, and when I read uh, through the Auditor General's report, I, I, the, the worst um, that, that comes up are inadequate system and uh, lack of verification. And so one has to, uh, has to uh, distinguish between uh, collaboration between outside people and officials of the fund. Uh, and and other issues, other and other uh, cases where there's simply an um, inadequate system. Yeah. You know, if, if this thing was to be introduced in normal circumstances, it would have taken a year or two. Yeah. So and you know, I'm, I'm, I am critical towards the fund because employers need to get their money, but in this case, they were overpayment. So, you know, there's there's pressure on them, and I come out. To some extent, I come out in, a, in a defense of them. Um, I've, yeah. I've got, if I'm very honest, and which I am now, is to say I've got a bit of sympathy with them battling through this thing. Yeah, so you're saying it's not necessarily a fraud or, or corruption that we're talking about here. Uh, we're talking about a, an organization that, given the infrastructure and systems it had, w was put in an almost impossible position. Uh, absolutely. I... I uh, I say again, if you introduce uh, the system, they, they, they were faced with an almost impossible task at the beginning. So uh, there, there may be, and there, most, there are probably some amount of fraud where uh, individuals took um, uh, liberty, took advantage of the system. There might be where there was uh, people that uh, collaborated in stealing. I think that is the case. Yeah. But I think there's a lot, large portion of them is simply system failure due to, among others, the time frame in which this thing was introduced. Yeah. I am surprised, though, are you, that the fund paid out um, uh, deceased people, uh, prisoners and, and minors, because the UIF itself was talking about this at one stage, saying it had noticed there were 100,000 fake IDs that had been used, and, and companies themselves were claiming on behalf of dead people. So it seemed like they understood the, the problem. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, you know, it, it is, it is, uh, it is interesting how quickly criminals can pick up on uh, on uh, inadequate system, and somebody must have uh, um, taken advantage of this. But you know, if uh, the, the pressure on the UIF was was quite huge, and 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 uh, you know, the man at the top. You know, he's normally the guy that knows the least in terms of the detail. He's led by what they're telling him, and they, 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 you get system uh, specialists to sort this thing out. And apparently now it comes out, it's failed. So, you know, it, it, one can say it's not a good, enough, good enough, and it's, it's never good enough if these things happen. But if you take into account the, the short time frame in which they had to introduce this, I've, 
I have some uh, sympathy. Yeah. Okay, so you were following uh, companies uh, that, that were claiming that weren't being paid out. Uh, I mean, can you give us some idea of how uh, the people who, who were meant to get paid out were, were prejudiced yeah. in the end because of this, yeah. if it's a system failure, let's say? Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, we have a, a two weekly uh, survey that we're doing, so we, we're quite, uh, we've got a reasonable idea what's happening in the market. And uh, in terms of the April uh, payment, uh, there's still about 10% outstanding, May about 20%. I don't have the exact figures, but I'm more or less in that region. And I think for, for uh, uh, April, May, June, that's about 30 to 40%. But only 50% of those that's been paid are happy with the amounts that's been paid. Yeah. And uh, so, so there is there is a problem. And you know, when when you uh, yes, the other side of the coin where people submit claims and not the right amount is a pay. That is a problem. Uh, you, know, you know, there are employees that those 10% in respect of April, either the employees has not received any money now or the employers have paid monies in advance, and they, they carry in that burden, and we know business is struggling. So, you know, that, again, that's not good enough. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> I have some sympathy okay, for Okay, but, but finally, yeah. overall, have many legitimate claims at least been paid out? I, I mean, looking at this, do we oh, yeah. say do we say that oh, a, yeah. a major intervention, remember this was announced by the president as part of that big package, has it failed, or, or do we just say, no, a lot of legitimate claims are being paid out, but there are some yeah. problems? You know, if you, let's talk about April. 90% has been paid in our calculations in terms of our survey. Now, in our survey... We, we reach quite a broad uh, bracket of the market when we do our surveys. 90% has been paid, and 50%, more or less, of those who've been paid are happy with the payment. The other 50%, there's, uh, you know, that's, that's not the, the correct amount, but at least they have received payment. May 20%, 50%. So, you know, the, the, it made a huge difference, difference and uh, we... We still need to work, and they need to still work on that. The problem is in this, through this uh, burden that they're carrying, it's very difficult for employees to communicate with them. You know, it, it's now a matter of if, if you've lodged your claim and you haven't received money, it's a question of wait for it. It's no use sending in letters and trying to call. That That is, that <laughs> you won't achieve anything by doing it. But, you know, in, in a time where uh, I'm talking on behalf of employers supposed to be very critical, um, there is some, uh, some sympathy for, the, for their battles. All right. Well, the, the Special Investigating Unit is now investigating. Uh, let's see what they find. Uh, was this just a, a system failure uh, at the UIF that was given this, this huge task of dispersing TERS funding? That was the CEO of the National Employers Association of South Africa, Gerard Papenfuss. We take a short